First and Now is your official BC Lions podcast. Matt Baker alongside Nick Kowalski uh, inside the Sakaris and Price shine, shrine, I should say. They're always shining. Uh, the Wall Center, the Go Goat Sports Studios, and when was the last time we were in here? Was it the week of our home opener? Or no, it was the Montreal week with Joey. Joey Alafieri, yes, our so guy. I, I had to duplicate the file, and that was the last time we were here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, how can we forget our pal Joey? That was in here, but it's been a few weeks. It's good to be back. We still like to get downtown on the non-game day every once in a while, and uh, the Lions are 7-3. and three. Sure made things interesting in Saskatchewan. That was fun to be a part of as that fourth quarter comeback attempt was unfolding. You know, VA threads one to Keon Hatcher. It's like, okay, 31-20. Still nine and change to go, whatever it was. Another quick strike to Lucky Whitehead. And it's like, okay, we're in business here. Couldn't get the two-pointer. So then you're still playing more catch-up. It's a little more uphill, needing a touchdown, obviously, than... Then a Sean White field goal to tie it, it would have been at 31-28 if Dom Davis punches that in. But all in all, uh, an exciting finish, but ultimately, you drop a game in the standings, two points behind Winnipeg now. Yeah, definitely an exciting game. And yeah, like you said, unfortunately, coming up on the wrong side of that one, comeback comes up just short, and Saskatchewan's back in it now. They're 5-5, five and five, like you said, so... The West race is on. That just felt like a physical Western game. It was it was a lot of fun to be a part of. That atmosphere was crazy. It's You always expect that going into Regina, but it, I don't know. Was it just me, or did it feel a little extra? Yeah, that's a little extra. Nice save on foods reference there, Nikki. You're, you're picking things up here. <laughs> Corporate Nick, yeah. Corporate Nick is at it again. That, um, that, to me, I mean, if the Western final in Winnipeg last year was the loudest road game I've been a part of, and that was, especially toward the end, that was right up there. That seemed that seemed playoff like in terms of intensity. And you mentioned, yeah, physicality. A lot of chippiness after the whistles, uh, refs not looking, both teams kind of getting after it. That and that's you know what? You want that intensity when we're approaching the halfway point or we're into the second half officially from a number of games perspective and I think that's the type of environment that will serve this team going well going forward because majority of the games left are at BC Place. But, yeah, that felt like a big boy game. There's also the fact, too, that it was Jake Dolagala at quarterback, right? And at face value, he was a third-string quarterback. Yeah. And you, we went in there and we got Saskatchewan's A-plus game, and that was Dolagala included. He played very well. So uh, I think now the team, I don't think I don't think they're maybe reading their plus, uh, press clip or anything like that but now the team knows that every week anybody can be anybody and you have to be ready for any opponent and even going into this week it's, it's going to be another non-starting quarterback uh, with Bolivar Mitchell out for Hamilton so yeah every week it's going to be a battle you can't there's no games you can't take any game for granted in this league and it was proven this past week and, and a variety of games well too right and credit to Dola Gala I mean they you know <laughs> bit of a lifeline to start off the fumble and they take over at the 25 whatever it was and lions are behind the eight ball playing catch up right away but guy was bigger than i thought he's a tall he's guy huge, yeah. and he's got those long legs he took off and ran it a couple of times and uh mr emilis with uh, at least one great catch the deep ball really killed it and we're going to talk to gary peters about some of those one-on-one matchups here in just a few minutes time but yeah, and it's easy to kind of shrug it off and say, "Oh, what happened? It was a it was a third string quarterback." Well, sometimes guys like that they get their opportunities and they and they realize they have to step up, they have to produce, and it was a full team effort. The line of scrimmage, talk about it again, was key. The Lions' offensive line struggled. Uh, I think it was five sacks for VA, and including one to put the final exclamation point on it when they were trying to get into field goal range and in the final minute, but. Uh, you talked about uh, the standings. Yeah, just a four-point cushion on the Riders now. The season series is going to be up for grabs September 29th when Saskatchewan comes to BC Place. But it's funny, though, because, like, last couple of weeks, the fan and, and the media talk, oh, it's going to come down to October 6th with Winnipeg, and it likely will, but if you give up another game to Saskatchewan between now and the 29th and don't get it done, then all of a sudden you're... <laughs> You're no longer in control for second, but it's a one game at a time mentality. 
an opportunity back home here against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. We'll talk a bit about the defensive home dominance here in just a few seconds. But other positives you take, Lucky Whitehead continues to to get better, continues to work himself back into uh, being a regular key contributor in this offense. Alexander Hollins went for 161 yards, Nick, now second in the CFL behind Austin Mack. If this Lions offense can produce and outscore a lot of these other problems, you're going to be talking about more wins than losses at the end of the day. Well, the thing too, yeah, like these receivers are just going crazy in this offense. And I I brought up earlier in the week of the pace that Vernon is on when he's playing under center. He's another 300-yard game, another 400-yard game for him last week, right? And 455. Yeah, Yeah. that's the positive. That's the positives you got to take away. Lucky Whitehead suddenly just under on a, a, a thousand yard pace for the season when there was questions about people were questioning his play and look at him now another another huge touchdown like we've been seeing for the past couple of years with Lucky. Um, and then Keon Hatcher, he, he Holland's a second in the league, but Keon Hatcher leads the entire league in yards per game. He's ahead of Kenny Lawler now, so Keon's getting almost ninety four yards a game on uh, receiving. That's that's number one in the league. And then in terms of this game too. We saw in week four in Toronto in the second half when the team got in a hole. They couldn't dig out of it. It was interception after interception. But last week, Vernon st- stuck to it, slinging the ball downfield, wasn't afraid. Uh, obviously learned from his past mistakes too, put balls right where they needed to be. And uh, That was Vernon dragging this team back in there and, and a resilient effort too. And he was banged up in the second quarter, right? Another aspect of this game is that I don't think maybe it was talked about enough is in the fourth quarter, the, the wind and the, it was raining too. So it was very it little. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't ideal weather. There was a big wind gust. So just to be able to air it out and put some deep balls right where they needed to be, it was, it was very impressive in my mind. Yeah. And uh, I kind of thought I was kind of having flashbacks to be in there in preseason. Remember, we got out of there just in time. Uh, some of you guys got left behind. Uh, the bus left Mosaic and thankfully we weren't flying out that night. You just had to Uber back to the hotel wasn't quite the monsoon post game, but yeah, the thankfully the rain held off, and I and I even thought about this. Oh man, like gonna have to kick a a potential long field goal to try to win this thing. Hopefully the wind and the rain, and Flintoff, despite punting into the wind, had himself a pretty good game. So yeah, that was the that was a mistake on my part. I didn't pack any layers, and um, as some of you can probably maybe decipher listening, I've been a little bit under the weather. Uh, but thankfully, um, feeling good. But under the weather, it was loud and didn't have any layers. It was a bit of a rough outing, just standing there on the sidelines, not doing actually yeah. <laughs> any actual physical activity. But um, that's just an aside. But yeah, the elements, hopefully not going to be subjected to it in November. That's why uh, first place, again, still very much in the grasp. That's the goal, to be home, to be indoors. Use this offense to its advantage, the fast track these high-flying receivers. And the other thing about the production we're talking about, remember we spoke with Jason Tucker last week on First and Now, and he said the mentality is um, never be satisfied. And that mantra showed a lot because these guys, they just keep pounding and keep pounding. Um, Some positives, though, uh, recording this on the Wednesday, I guess speaks to the point of year we're in, and some guys have been banged up. Uh, Rick Campbell and the staff electing to go with a walkthrough. Had the traditional day one off and scaled it back to a walkthrough today, so what's known as day three in football or Thursday practice should be full go and intense, but some positive signs. Jarrell Broxton, back out there. Woody Barron, back out there. Marcus Moore, back out there. We'll see what they do if they activate both Barron and Moore. You have to take off maybe a defensive back in Mike Jones and a linebacker, maybe Brooks Parker, but we we shall see if both of those guys get activated. The news not as good for Nathan Cherry. Coach Rick confirming it today. Um, Knee injury will keep him out for the remainder of the season. Just an unlucky break. Got caught up in a pile up there early in the contest and was ruled out right away, had to be helped off, and that was a guy that was contributing well. Year two, the interior of that defensive line, we've talked about how that's been kind of an underrated aspect of this defense. Tough news for Nathan Cherry. Yeah, uh, it happened on a run stop too where he's running outside the box to go track down Jamal Morrow, and yeah, just an unfortunate um, situation with Cherry going down uh, in that game. But yeah, you got Francis Bemi also uh, uh, practicing now again too today. Uh, getting some work after practice, so he's another guy that can be an option in in, in this defense. And 
Yeah, it just speaks to the intensity of these football games. I'm, we were talking last week that October 6th is definitely circled on our calendars, but September September 29th, right, is the, yep. the tiebreaker with the Riders. Yeah. Orange shirt day game, yep. Yeah, so just the trenches last the trenches on Sunday were feisty all game long. Matthew Betts, Sione Tuihema, Colin Kelly on the Riders' side was the, kind of the guy that Betts and Tuihema yep. were taking a lot of issues with, and then... You saw our old friend uh, Peter Godber mixing yeah, it up a yeah, little bit, yeah, too. Peter, I love that. Peter wasn't afraid either, yeah. and then... Um, uh, obviously, the Gary and uh, Gary Peters and Samuel MLS battle. Like MLS is becoming one of the top Canadian receivers in this league, and they both got their licks on each other in Sunday. So that's another. I'm always talking about Gary and his one-on-one battles, and MLS and Gary were all game long too. And then this is one thing I want to bring up. Uh, like MLS, obviously made his plays, made up, had a fantastic touchdown. Yeah, uh, another deep ball got, he got on Gary too, and then the second quarter, but. What what are your thoughts on? I, I understand if you're going to mock a player celebration and do it once or twice or do it right in his face, but I, what what do you do that there? The, the, you did the arrow, you did the the X, what ten times I think, just just yeah. a good ten. I, they came back from the commercial break and he was still doing it. So while I respect the the great plays he made at MLS and tip my hat to him, I, I think you got to get your own celebration after a I while, think, right? Well, yeah, you're right. I think for me. That falls under the category of if it's our guy doing it, then I love it. And then you don't like someone on the other team doing it. Because didn't Alexander Hollins on his first half touchdown did the sleepy thing where he, yeah. he used the foot? And then was it Emilis or one of the it other guys Emilis, in the yeah. second half did it again? So there is kind of a what goes around comes around thing. I don't think I have a problem with it. I mean, it's the entertainment industry. As long as you're not blatantly disrespecting someone and, and taking something personal at them, I think I'm okay with it. It's I'm cool with it's it. Just the, it's, it's just the era we're in. I'm cool with it once. Yeah, I, to- I totally get that. If you make a play on a guy that has a trademark celebration, it's cool to do it once. But you're, they're coming back from the commercial break. There was Jamal Morrow touchdown. He was, I think he was doing it too. So I'm kind of like, get, get your own celebration, right? I'll After tell you. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. But I'll tell you my favorite example was it was it uh, Kansas City Tampa Bay, the, the Tyreek Hill peace sign when he outran the defender when they beat them in the regular season, and then when that who was it? I can't. It was a uh, Winfield, right? The yeah. Safety. So then in the Super Bowl he stops Tyreek and he does it right back. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, he did yeah. it. We did it once. Just and then once. It's over with. Once yeah. when the result was already pretty much. Not in yeah. question. And I think Gary, so, at the end of the third quarter, I'm pretty sure Gary had enough of him, and, <laughs> and the extracurricular started getting out of hand there for a bit. But, but. That, hey, you know what? That's fine. Uh, they have to come into BC Place one more time, and, and that's going to be a storyline. You know they're going to be talking about it inside the film room, inside the meetings. We've talked about how confidence, how confident this defense is after a couple of shutouts and, and talking about donuts, and, and that's fine. Uh, that, that means when it doesn't go your way, you better make sure you do everything in your power to get back to playing at the standard of what you're capable of. And very quickly, we're going to tee up Gary Peters here in just a minute, but four home games, 59 opposing offensive possessions, one touchdown. Crazy. Came against Montreal uh, on their opening series. We're talking about uh, recording that episode with our pal Joey. So that that it's been that long, right, since we've seen uh, the opposing offense uh, score a touchdown at BC Place, uh, any kind of touchdown for that matter. And we're going to tee up the Hamilton game in particular, talk about a couple of old friends. But uh, let's hear from Gary Peters uh, right now following Tuesday practice, talking about Clemson life and... The keys to um, beating up uh, this Ticat team this week and a little friendly wager he has with an old teammate who plays for Hamilton. Let's hear from Gary Peters right now. I hope you guys get to work. See you back. Cheers. See you tomorrow. Yeah. He might, he might not get, be here this week. Get the loving. He might go to see us, you know. No, no. I'm, I'm All right. He'll be here. He'll. He's always clutching up. Uh, the Moj uh, piping in. And yeah, uh, Clemson product... Gary Peters with us on first and now and uh, well PD you've watched the film yeah. um, what needs to be better this week uh, the biggest thing out there is communication you know uh, every time you see us giving up big plays it's a lot of times guys aren't out of position it's just our communication you know whether it's the safety being over the top whether it's the corner getting somebody inside whether it's the halfback playing a certain leverage you know the biggest thing for us was uh, communication and uh, I think the second half we did a great job with that but uh, it's, it's too late by then you know we're, we're on the road a uh, team that's desperate and uh, they gave us everything they had so you can't wait till the, the second half to want to show up and play. 
Yeah, and uh, they got to come back to us in uh, yeah, to in the end of September, I believe it is, and we look forward to that one. But plenty of work ahead first. Uh, sure. Just how, how committed this group is overall. Like behind us, John Bowman getting in some extra work uh, with the D-line following the end of practice, uh, focused on getting this right. How satisfying is that? Uh, it's very satisfying. You know, you, as, as a team, you know, we're 7-3, we're and three, but you can tell, like, no one no one has felt like uh, – like they're like they're satisfied, like you said. You know, uh, whether it's a guy like Keon Hatcher out here catching over-the-shoulder passes that he missed from the game, uh, spending 45 minutes out here on the jugs, uh, whether it's the DBs coming in early on a day that we don't have to be here early, just to get our reads together and get it and get everything in order. You know, uh, you see it around the board, and uh, it's kind of getting a feeling of uh, we're, we're kind of expecting to win every week. So when when it, when we lose, it hurts that much more. And uh, guys are in here putting in a little bit extra work or or doing a little bit more. You know, so so it doesn't happen again. Uh, Hamilton, uh, what type of uh, challenge do you see on film here? Uh, it's a big challenge. You know, at the end of the day, they're a professional team. You know, they got James Butler, who was here last year. So you know how JB is going to come in and, and want to run the ball. Uh, they got a lot of good weapons around the quarterback. So uh, we're not going to take them lightly. You know, uh, it's a big challenge for us this week, but we want to come out and make an, a statement. You know, we don't want to put two losses on the board back to back. So for us, it's a big week. Everybody's locked in, and we're looking forward to getting in the W column. Any texting or fun going on with JB, or is it all business till the game's so for over? Me, for me, one of my closest friends is Chris Edwards. He was here a couple right. years ago, yeah. So they got Chris Edwards on defense too. So we text and go back and forth. Uh, we got a, got a little push-up wager on the line. So uh, hopefully we come out on top. You said, it, I mean, some good veterans over there. Uh, they Fig has been out, but yep. he's been there. Jameer Thurman, uh, some veterans that you have to be mindful of on both sides of the ball. Uh, joking with Moj just before this about uh, Clemson. Uh, do you still have the OBJ gloves? You swapped with oh, them yeah, with yeah, SFU. Yeah. Where, where do you keep those? I keep those in Mom Deuce's house. So my mom has like a whole little uh, like collage of me in her basement, like just a little shrine of me, if you want to say, if you want to call it, on the wall down in the basement. So I keep everything at her, all my memorabilia at her house, you know, for right now until I, I get my own place and uh, able to put it up in my basement. But uh, I take pride in, in things like that, uh, playing great players like that, whether it was OBJ or DeAndre Hopkins, Sammy Watkins, you know, just being able to compete with those guys and, and see where they are in their careers, you know, it's a blessing to me to see all the stuff that I've done and all the things that I've got from that. And, you know, it just, it, I mean, it, it humbles me, but at the same time, it, it lets me know that uh, I've been around a lot of good company, you know, so. Chick-fil-A Bowl, uh, one Gary Peters here swapping gloves with OBJ after a win over LSU, Nick. Oh. But we got a handful of SEC DBs. We, got, sure, we, yeah. we, we play like SEC DBs for sure. That's what I feel like, you know, across the board. So, uh, yeah. And then everybody, you know, is uh, they, they feel like they're, they're the best at, at their position, you know. So for us, it's great, you know, a good mix of young guys and older guys, but everybody's got that competitive mindset in our secondary. And that's what I love because we all can play every position in the secondary as well. It's been a big storyline too at home this season. You guys have gave up a single touchdown. Is there so is there like that built-in confidence now? Like you've had, this is another chance too to bounce back after a loss going in at home. Is there already that built-in confidence still playing at home? Uh, most definitely. You know, anytime you get to play in front of your fans, you know, a lot of times a lot of guys like to get here real early on game day, especially when we play at home. So you can get here early, you know, get in the hot tub, get a massage, and then and, and it's just more of a home feeling. You get to sleep in your bed the night before. So it's no greater feeling than playing at home in front of your fans, you know, especially when they're behind you. They're the loudest when, when the defense is on the field. So we feed off of that energy as well. So I would definitely say playing at home is great. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's still football, you know. We're having fun with the opportunity. Can you reveal the details too about this Chris Edwards bet? Because you guys are, I think you have many interceptions right now, but he has a touchdown. So is it something to do with that? Nah, it's just more so which team is going to win the game, you know. We always uh, chit-chat about who's going to play better on, off the field, but at the end of the day, I want him to go out there and, and play great. You know, I, I don't wish nothing but the best for him on the field because it's one of my close friends. But at the end of the day, we still need to come out with the win. That's, that's, what, that's what this business is about, and that's what we're going in there to do. Last week too, something I found really fascinating was it was yourself and Samuel Emulus. Yeah. Like he, like all all game long, you guys were it was very physical throughout the I think all twelve guys in the field. But you two, yeah, you had, you, yeah, you guys had some crazy battles. Is that something like that makes you more excited about going back into the field every possession, or is that something that you know maybe makes you more fired up to 
shut down your defender? Most definitely. I mean, it fuels you as a player, you know, at the same time, you know, you never want to see a guy going out there doing your celebration uh, or, 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 or things like that. But at the same time, he's a, he's a really good player. You know, anytime you get to play against really good players and compete at a high level, you know, you love that. And then sometimes it's going to be some trash talking, you know. I don't pride myself in tra talking trash every week. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. So when two great players are going against each other and it's a battle, you know, that thing, that thing, those type of things tend to happen. So that's all that was at the end of the day. But I'm definitely looking forward to going out there and improving myself every chance that I get, you know, whether it's playing Sass again or this weekend against Hamilton, and, and that's what I plan to do. All right, uh, we look forward to, to seeing you inside BC Place, and let's keep that home dominance going, my yeah. friend. We'll uh, hope to see you at the podium post game. Right? Yeah, most definitely, I'll see you there. You know, whoever does bake takes, you know, usually balls out for the week, so yeah, hopefully I'll see you this weekend. That's right, we wrote the art nice article on you last time. I think that was going in uh, to the win over Saskatchewan yeah. the first time, so yes, let's do it. Yep, so bat baker's my good luck charm, so hopefully it works again this weekend. All right. Thank y'all. Great stuff uh, with Gary Peters. Can talk football with him all day, and and yeah, Chris Edwards, uh, the BC Lions uh, nickel linebacker, was here in the 2019 season, which was Gary's second in orange. And those guys, of course, go back to their time with Edmonton even before BC. Just love Gary's uh, attitude and mindset here. Yeah, definitely one of the best interviews on the team, in my opinion. I love when he goes up to the podium after the game, and based on what he told us, he's expecting to have a big game that'll get his name called to the podium on Saturday night. Bakes Takes wrote about him. That's right, yours truly. <laughs> I never refer to myself in the third person until now, of course, but that's right. So hopefully that's some more good karma. Let's have, let's have a Gary Peters game ball interception for David Z to do up. How's that sound? Sounds like a good plan to me. David Z's birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, David yeah. Z. David the, Ziskin, one of legend. Our, our loyal listeners, uh, does a little photography at games and practices, does up the game balls, and a big supporter of bclions.com. And all the content. And by the way, uh, last thing on Peters for now, there's an off-season content idea. we got to go down to Atlanta to his mom's house and get a look at the shrine, the OBJ gloves from Clemson LSU bowl game. I'd love that. I think he trains with Quincy Moje in the off-season too, so we could do a little DB content That's right. down in the ATL. A lot of guys hang out there down, down near Atlanta. So the ATL, as they say, Hamilton Tiger Cats 3-7 and seven, really... Three and six, I should say. They've had the two buys already. Coming off the loss to Edmonton, and if that doesn't motivate this Tiger Cat team, and you heard Gary Peters talking about it, Rick Campbell today too. We we spoke with him after practice. How about how every team in this league of, is capable of doing something on any given week? And once again, the Lions know they can't take an inexperienced quarterback lightly. What's a big key for you to victory against Hamilton? Well, it's got, I look at the return of James Butler in this game. You got you to gotta think James Butler is going to be fired up to come back into BC place, uh, play his old team, obviously be, being an all-star last season. But uh, he was an all-star, right? Yep. Been there, right? Yeah. yeah. So all-star running back uh, obviously departed to Hamilton this year, and he's been someone the Ticats have leaned on, especially with their quarterback injuries. Uh, Taylor Powell being the starter this week, uh, we can assume. Um, but they're, they're, they're definitely going to try and pound at the JB, I would imagine. And the, the Tiger Cats, even though they lost last week, they still had 134 on the ground. Uh, Butler has been kind of a workhorse for them as advertised all season. So uh, th that's what I'm looking for this this game is, is how our how our run defense stacks up against JB and, and the Hamilton run attack. And that's going to be key. Uh, they're going to be relying on Butler to pick up some of those yards on first down. And JB himself, he's doing what he does. He's on pace to go over 1,000 on the ground. He's got uh, just over 800 from scrimmage. Remember, he led the CFL in scrimmage yards yeah, last year. Right, yeah. More so than Brady Oliveira in Winnipeg, if you're talking scrimmage yards, because he's versatile catching it out of the backfield. So, yeah, uh, that's going to be a big storyline. You know some of our guys on defense and PD there talking are going to be jacked up to play him. Uh, the offensive line, they know they have to be better, and uh, we will see. Uh, the faster track should be a hot day. Roof should be open, as uh, we are still in the very much the summer season here. All the recipe is there for the offense to do what they can against a Hamilton defense. That's been giving up a lot of points, but again, they still have some veteran presence. I think Dylan Wynn made his season debut last week, coming yeah. off of injury. Um, they've had some other injuries to other key positions, but some veterans there. So starting off fast and not letting the foot off the gas is going to be a key to get Hamilton out of it early. Yeah, they have a very good front, and especially with Wynn back, uh, 
Um, they got uh, Carney, number five. There he's one of the best pass rushers in this league, maybe more, more of the underappreciated pass rushers. And they're a team that also went uh, the route of plucking some talent away from Winnipeg, and they signed Casey Sales last year. That's it, yeah. Beast up the middle for them. So, um, but yeah, one area that Hamilton hasn't been uh, that, that well in that you've been mentioning is uh, their their pass defense. They're one of two teams that's averaging over ten yards uh, per pass uh, completion against. So. Uh, that's that's on the higher side of things, and they got there's guys like Richard Lennon in that backfield who are more maybe the lockdown type of defensive backs, but there are some areas I think that can be exposed there, and especially I think we've said that we'll take our receivers versus any secondary in this league or any receiver group in this league, so that's a matchup definitely to to look at in this game too. I forgot they also have uh, Stavros Castatonis. Castatonis, am I saying that right? The UBC I think product. it's Castatonis, yeah. Yeah. Moj will correct me because he's a he's a UBC guy. Was yeah, yeah Vanier Cup winner 2015, and um, that's yeah have to expose that area. VA is gonna have to get the ball out quickly, do what was working for him. Because remember, fourth quarter, hurry up, have to score fast in a loud environment. They performed well in Saskatchewan, making a game of it at the end, and uh, they're gonna want to control the tempo and start fast. Don't let the foot off the gas, like we've been saying. Yeah, one guy too. I, uh, I have my eye. Uh, I've been paying attention to is uh, Carthel Flowers Lloyd. He has 19 special team tackles on the year, and by far leads the CFL. Yeah, that's uh, right. So he was one of those guys where I was looking at the stats, and I'm like, and Flowers Lloyd. He's a he's a rookie in the CFL too, and number 43 on Hamilton. So I've been paying attention to him the last couple of games. Although I was looking at the the PFF stats, and he does have six penalties in the teams this year. So, God, I think that just means he's a he's a physical force on the teams. He's either making a making a big tackle or he's been picking up a penalty and crossing the line a bit. So number 43 on Hamilton, someone to watch too on the teams. Yeah, good special teams player. Uh, they have him at will linebacker behind Simone Lawrence. Again, one of those veterans we're talking about. We mentioned Chris Edwards and his his friendly wager. Jameer Thurman in the middle, free agent addition from the Calgary Stampeders. These are guys that have played in big games. Their record may not be what it wanted, what they want it to be, but uh, cannot look overlook anybody in this league. As we have learned. All right, before we're out of here, you want to talk about celebrations? Well, you're... we talked about the Gary and Emily thing. That's what I want to okay. talk about. Well, I thought you were talking about like the list of celebrations. Oh, the we're best doing. In the That's league. what I thought you wanted to yeah, do. We'll, we'll be pumping those out for midseason. A little tease for you, right? We've had some excellent ones. We have. But that's what I like. They're unique and they're their own players. We're not copying any other players. We got our own, we got our own unique aspects yeah. to it. So that's what, that's what I enjoy. Again, it's meant to be fun. Yeah. I, I know people of a certain vintage will say, oh, in my day, we didn't do that. Yeah, it's fine. But as long as you're not disrespecting your opponent, and no, that's not the name of the game here. And and you know what? I mean, Alexander Hollins, his halftime interview with Britt Dort coming out, I rewatched it, talked about, yeah, the reason for the celebration, got to put them to sleep and... I don't know if that got back to somebody on on the other side in the heat of battle, but they obviously saw it and marked it down, and and Mr. Emilis um, did it. Yeah, that, that's fine. Well, what goes around comes around. If if we did the same thing, we would not be complaining either. Yeah, it's one of those things where if you don't want it to happen, just stop it from happening. That's, right. That's how I always view it. If you don't like it, then don't make it. Make sure it doesn't happen to you. So, uh, yeah, you got to give credit where credits due, and that's that's what it comes down to with celebrations in my mind. Yep, and uh, we know Mr. Peters and the Lions secondary will be on point looking to shut down Hamilton here. Saturday, 4 o'clock, it's our Superheroes Night, uh, paying tribute to first responders. Backyard Hammer Fest, we're calling it, underway noon at Terry Fox Plaza, presented by Play Now Sports. $5 Molson Coors beverages for those 19 and over. St. Louis barbecue ribs uh, we're serving. I might have to go up and, and get some ribs for my little pregame. You beat me to it. Lunch sna- slash snack. Yeah, you're going to be going and filming up there. I know that. Camera might, that be a much. Little, camera might have some barbecue sauce on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't be the first time. Just save those hard drives, though. Don't damage those hard drives. Okay. You know what I'm saying. Uh, noon, Terry Fox Plaza, high striker game, uh, the hammer game where you hit the hammer and the thing goes up. You see how hard you can hit it. Uh, the proceeds to that is by donation will support wildfire victims in this province. And again, our thoughts with everybody in Kelowna, Yellowknife, everywhere across this country uh, dealing with the effects of wildfires. Hopefully the worst is over for this year. Uh, Lions, Tiger Cats, it's all a presentation of World Vision Canada. BCLions.com slash Superhero Night. Tickets start at just $25. Youth get in for 10, 17 and under. Find me a better sports deal in town. I dare you. 
You can't. And we'll be back. We're going to get ready to go to Montreal next week. My favorite road trip on the CFL circuit. And hopefully we're talking about an 8-3 and three Lions team going in to face a tough Alouettes team. Again, Montreal, the last team to score a touchdown at BC Place. Last opposing team to do it. Will that streak continue? We shall see. Be sure to subscribe, rate, leave a review. This is First and Now, the official BC Lions podcast. <laughs>